I'm here with Frank Ferrante, a Sicilian from Brooklyn who's now living in San Francisco and subject of the documentary May I Be Frank, a film about sex, drugs, and transformation. We're also here with Greg Marks. He's a filmmaker from New York who moved to San Francisco with the intention of making a documentary. And when he arrived, he teamed up with Ryland Englehart, Carrie Moisier, and Connor Gaffney. They just finished the initial filming of a powerful 42-day project about transformation, and that became the movie May I Be Frank. So I saw this film a couple of months ago and just absolutely loved it. Um, the trailer is under the interview here, but Frank, I just want to ask you, you've been traveling around the country at screenings talking to people about the film. What has this journey been like for you on a personal level? Uh, I, I was, uh, there was nothing in my life that prepared me for this experience. At least that's how it feels. Uh, one could argue that, but I mean, I, 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 I was not prepared for, for this experience. And um, um, every time we go somewhere, it's, it, it amazes me the way people, the, the response that we get from people, the intensity of the response, um, that, uh, and, and how, how loving people are in response to the film and and it was really it was like one of the, it's like one of those stories like you know that you hear about some guy being plucked from obscurity and, and dropped into this into this into this you know the recognition and and uh, so it's it's really it's it's another it's another journey it's just part of another Another journey, you know. I'm in a new country uh, with you know new currency and new language and and new customs and and uh, and I'm learning how to navigate through it. And, and one of the most challenging things, of course, is to maintain my center. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, uh, to you know that that uh, that um, there's a certain. Uh, there's a, there's a little unreality to it when when you when you have that much adoration and then that's only a, an aspect of the film and then there's the rest of life and and if if I get really wrapped up in that then I start as like I guess what what some people might refer to as believing my own BS you know <laughs> um, so well and just to let viewers know Frank was struggling with depression and addiction and stumbled into Cafe Gratitude, a raw vegan restaurant in San Francisco, and then ended up going on a raw vegan diet for 42 days. But, I mean, that's significant, but there's so much more to it than that, you know, diving into the sort of the pain that you were dealing with mm. at that time. Well, yeah, I was, as I, I was on nearly 300 pounds and, and very isolated, extremely isolated and depressed and... and um, uh, I was not on a roll. Let's put it that way. And uh, when I walked into Cafe Gratitude, uh, I was met with a tremendous amount of affection that I wasn't was, was not accustomed to at the time. Because uh, when you're overweight like that, or fat, which mm -hmm. is a word you're not supposed to use, but since I'm talking about me, I can say it. I was fat, and and I felt I, ne I never felt seen. I felt like people were looking at my my weight. They were looking at this this figure. This 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 this, this eclipse of the sun you know it's what i just felt that i wasn't being seen and when i went into this place i started to feel like i was being seen mm -hmm. and i was being heard and it was very appealing to me and so i kept going back and the, and you got so much support from the three guys who worked at cafe gratitude yes i did it was amazing to watch your interactions with them. Greg, why don't you talk about your involvement in this film? Because you sure. met up with these three guys, Ryland, Carrie, and Connor, and they just yeah. finished the initial filming. Yeah, I think the important message that I would like to speak on is, um, and it started with Frank, is that everything that's made this film come about um, is actually very similar to the 42 Days and what they did with Frank. And uh, a lot of that is based on affirmation. So at the time, you know, Frank was in a place in his life where he didn't know what to do. He was sick and tired of being sick and tired and was just sort of affirming out loud, like, I need help. I need something to help me break out of this. And at the same time, the guys were, um, had this creation in their mind of like, hey, let's do something like the opposite of Super Size Me, where we take somebody and we, we give them raw food and affirmation and, you know, we really want to do this. So they were affirming that. And then Frank walks in the door. Basically, they both are sort of 
fulfilling each other's dreams, requests to the universe, you know. And then I was in New York at the time, and I was disenchanted with what was going on there and just said, you know, I want to go to San Francisco and make powerful films. And I, you know, but the minute I moved here, they were the first guys I met. So it's important that it's all... I think the message here that, that is why the film is doing so well now and why it's such a powerful story is because we all had sort of self like selfless requests to the universe that we each had. And a lot of times people have a hard time asking for what they want. They feel like they're being selfish or ego-driven or something like that or that they don't deserve it. But what's really great to see here is that we each were whether our requests might seem selfish to others, we actually were um, fulfilling each one of our requests. So, like, my request went out there, and they fulfilled mine, and I didn't know that at the same time I was fulfilling theirs. So this is beauty in, in how to make things happen. But, yeah, that's the story of how I came into this and how the universe threw us together. And when I saw the raw footage, it was clear from day one that this was the film... That had to be made, and and I knew that I was the guy to make it with them. Yeah. The, the thing that really strikes me about it is just the fact that it's so honest. And in our society, a society that's addicted to painkillers mm -hmm. and very unhealthy food and isolation mm -hmm. and suburbs, uh -huh. and it seems to be getting worse. What I love about this is that you tackle these issues, but in a, such an honest way. And um, a couple of minutes ago, Frank, you were talking about all of the people that have shared their stories with you because they're so hungry mm. for an outlet. And again, like you said, they're also hungry to be heard. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Um, well, I think, I think um, everybody wants to be heard. Uh, um, uh, marriage counseling has been, you know, I, I see, I, I've been to marriage counseling when I was married and marriage counseling can be defined as two people screaming at each other about not being heard. And um, and I think that that um, um, there is a my uh, there's a yearning for it. I mean, I I see it like one of the places I see it is in like Starbucks, for example. They, you know, people congregate, mm. but they miss a step. Yeah, they 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 all go. They they're really looking for community, but they go into this place, but they go in with their computer or they're going with their headset, and it's like they're next to people, but they're not really with people. You know, they they they're almost they're flirting, putting their toe in the water. And I and I think, well, if, for example, in Europe they have the piazzas or the squares where people they're they're designed. There's within the architecture of the city. There's a there's a designated spot for human interaction. The United States, does, among other countries, but I'm not blaming the United States. But in, in our culture, we don't really have that, and um, and, um, and 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 it's it's antithetical to being human. We're pack animals. We need and want to be connected with other human beings. And I also, to take it a step further, take a go out on the limb here, is that's that's how we get a glimpse into the divine is through other people. That's that's the connection to spirit, is is through that selflessness that that that's that's when I really believe that that, that I'm connected, and and so it's really part of who I who I see myself as being as a human being is is because I'm always. I'm always yearning to connect. I had no idea I was going to connect on this level. Uh, I had that that blows my mind. But I just we see ourselves. I'm just I am just a reflection of the people watching the film, the f and, 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 and 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 you know and and um, vice versa. So uh, it's this constant reflecting, constant immersion into introspection all the time. It's uh, it's quite something. Pretty intense. I can't even imagine. That's Frank Ferrante. He is a 59-year-old Sicilian from Brooklyn living in San Francisco, subject of May I Be Frank, a film about sex, drugs, and transformation. I should say he was 54 when the filming started. And Greg <laughs> Marks uh, is a filmmaker behind May I Be Frank. And then in our next section, we'll talk about what it's been like for Frank and Greg to travel across the country outside of the bubbles like San Francisco, L.A., and New York. <laughs> 